Hey folks, how's it going? Thanks for checking out the video. I'm Johnny and today I'm going to show you how to set up the Contoso retail data set so you can use it with Power BI. So, you're learning Power BI. Doesn't it get a bit dull always importing Excel spreadsheets and flat files? Wouldn't it be great if you had your own database you could connect to and a sample set of data you could play around with? Great, so today I'm going to show you how to download and install a local instance of SQL Server and then import the Contoso Retail dataset. Now you might have heard of Contoso. It's a fictional company that Microsoft often used to demonstrate their products. The retail dataset is publicly available to download and it is something that you often see used in Power BI demos. Now in today's video, there are several websites I'm going to need to visit so that we can download various components that we need. I'll make sure that I'll put a link to everything in the description. Now, I bang on all the time about how experienced I am working in business intelligence. I've been working in BI for over a decade and I've spent the last five years specifically with the Microsoft stack. However, it was only this year for the first time that I went through the process of setting up a sample data set for myself. Now, when I was doing it, I struggled to find any good tutorials out there, so I figured I'd make a video. The first thing we'll need to do is download a copy of SQL Server. So let's head on over to Microsoft SQL Server website. Now, we want to ignore these first few options at the top of the page. If we scroll down the page a little bit, we'll see that those good eggs at Microsoft are giving away free stuff again. There are two free versions of SQL Server that you can download. Express is a watered down version of SQL Server. It's got a limit of 10 gigs of data. But even though it's limited, if you wanted to, you could use this for commercial purposes. So if you've got a need for a production system that's got a small volume of data, you can use this version of SQL Server for free. Or you've got the developer version. The developer version contains all the same features as the fully fledged enterprise version. Except you can't use this for production scenarios. You can only use it for development work or for experimentation with enterprise features. A full feature comparison of these two SQL Server editions is available on the website. Both of these versions will work absolutely fine for the Contoso retail dataset. Now I have no plans to use this for commercial activities. And at some point I might want to experiment with some of those enterprise features, so I'm going to download the developer edition. So, Click download, and that will download your installer. Once that's downloaded, you can launch it. Now, for the installation type, I'm going to choose custom. That's because there's a few properties that I want to change, and I'll explain those when I come to them. The default location is fine for downloading the media. and that'll then launch SQL Server Installation Center. We want to select Installation over on the left-hand side. And then we want this top option, New SQL Server Standalone Installation. And then it's a case of us working through this setup wizard. And click through next here. We've got the developer edition selected. Click through to next. Make sure you fully read all the terms and conditions. <laughs> and for our current purposes, and to keep the installation light, we just literally need to tick this database engine services from the instant features. Now I want to install this as my default instance. Now this has been selected by default here. When I tested this with installing SQL Express, it tried to default to a named instance. Now for a local installation, and especially just for learning purposes, I'd recommend having it as your default instance instead. Let's click next. The 
using the default settings on this page is fine. And now this database engine configuration page is the page where I want to make a few changes. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that I add the current user as the administrator. And then I'm going to go up to this data directories. Now, like most modern PCs, I've got a partitioned hard drive. So on my C drive, I run my operating system and that's where I install my applications. But my D drive is used for storage. By default, this installer will try and install your data onto your C drive as well. I want to change that. So in this data root directory at the top, I'm just going to change the path and look at that to point on my D drive instead. And by changing the data root directory at the top of this tab, it automatically changes all the other directories that sit below it. With that done, I can click next. And then hit install. And we're done. And close the installation center. Now you have SQL Server installed, but you're also going to need some software to be able to connect to it. Now traditionally, that means SQL Server Management Studio, or SSMS for short. But at heart, I'm a bit of a hipster. I have a beard. I wear plaid shirts and beanie hats. I have wide rim glasses. And I like to eat avocados and drink craft beer. Now what also comes with this territory is I prefer my user interfaces to have a dark theme. My SQL client of choice these days is the new kid on the block, Azure Data Studio. It comes with a really cool range of dark themes built into it and you can download more if you want to. It also has all the features I need from a SQL client. If you download SSMS these days, it comes with Azure Data Studio bundled with it. Or you can download a standalone version of ADS. Let's now connect to our SQL Server instance. I'm here in Azure Data Studio. A few different options to create a connection. There's a drop down here, or there's a button in the middle of the screen. You need to input the connection details on the right hand side. Because it's our default instance, we connect using the server name localhost. And we set up a server with Windows authentication, so no need for a username and password. Next. And we're connected. So if I head over to the left hand side and select the databases option, see these are the databases that are on the server. These are the system databases that ship by default when you install SQL Server. I can also use my connections tab, which is over here on the left. Browse my connections as well. And as you can see under databases, we've just got these system databases. So what we need to do now is actually go and grab our Contozo database and data set. It's available here on the Microsoft website. We come down to download. It'll give us these two options. Now this bottom one, which has got the suffix of ABF, we can ignore that. That's actually an analysis services data set. We want this one with the BAK suffix. Clicking next, we'll start downloading this executable file. Once the download is done, launch that. That'll launch this wonderfully vintage looking Windsor Extractor. Now, remember when we did our SQL Server installation, we changed our data directory to be our D drive. What we want to do now is browse that data directory because that's where we're going to unzip our files to. So, select browse. Data, SQL Server, drill down so we get to this backup folder. Hit OK and then so with the files unzipped, hit OK, close the extractor. We're done with this web page. Now in a file explorer, let's browse that data directory and see what's there. So, see the Contozo retail DW.back file, 
which is the backup file for the database that we've downloaded. But what's also pretty cool with this data set download is it comes with this Excel file that's a data dictionary for all the data that's contained in the database. Let's take a look. So if you hadn't guessed from its name, this data set is in a data warehouse format. So we have dimension tables and we have fact tables. So this data dictionary is organized in these tabs at the bottom. The dim table tab shows all the dimension tables. You've got the names of the tables, the columns, the data types, and the description of what the data is. Same for our fact table. Now this dimension and cube tab you can ignore, that's to do with the analysis services data set that we didn't download. Then there are a couple of views that are defined in the database that you can see defined here too. With our data set downloaded, we're now ready to import it into SQL Server. So I'm back here in Azure Data Studio. One of the great things about Azure Data Studio, it remembers your connections, which is great. Uh, I'm gonna go to my server here, right click and select manage. Then I'm gonna choose restore. From this drop down, I'm gonna restore from a backup file. And then from this ellipsis over here, we're going to select the file that we want to upload. Now it's actually clever enough to figure out where my backup directory is. So it's already taken me to where my Contoso Retail BAK file is. Let's click that. Hit OK. Store. And literally within seconds we're done. No YouTube magic applied here to speed that up. Now if I go across to my connections tab and expand my databases, you can see the databases here. If I expand that, we can see all the tables. And if I right click, you can start browsing the data and see that data has indeed been uploaded. Now you may decide to browse that data using Azure Data Studio or SSMS, just so you can familiarize yourself with that data. Or if you're new to using SQL as a language, you've now got a sample data set that you can learn with. But most importantly, from a Power BI developer's perspective, you've now got a sample data set for you to be able to practice your skills. Let's look at connecting to the data set with Power BI. So you've got a couple of options from a blank report to be able to connect to SQL Server. You've got this nice big button in the middle of the screen that Microsoft have recently provided, or you've got the get data option, or there's a SQL Server button in the ribbon now. We click on that option again. We use localhost for our default instance. Click OK. We can see the list of databases that are available to us. Here's the Contoso dataset. And then we can select which tables we want to import. Now, just to demonstrate the size of the data set, if I create a new measure, just to count the number of rows in fact online sales, which I know is the biggest fact table in this data set. Add a card. Let's add a new measure. As you can see, we've got 13 million records. Now that still isn't the biggest data set size in the world, but it is larger than you're likely to be exposed to if all you've been doing up to now is using Excel spreadsheets. With this volume of data, you can now start to learn how to optimize your data models and DAX and get the best performance from Power BI. And there are other data sets that you can download and restore to SQL Server using this technique. You may have also heard of the AdventureWorks data set, and there's the Wide World Importers data set that you can download too. Maybe you don't want to experiment with data that's actually in a data warehouse format. Maybe you want to learn how to work with transactional systems in Power BI. There is a transactional or OLTP version of the AdventureWorks database available as well. That was how to set up the Contoso Retail dataset so you can use it with Power BI.
If you've got any questions or feedback, please don't hesitate to slide them into the comments section below. I hope the video has been useful and if you have enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up. Thanks once again for watching and I'll see you next time.